Let's go. Water on Demand Operations with Daniel M. Early, professional engineer, chief engineer of Origin Clear. Well, good afternoon, Dan. Uh, so it's nice seeing you in 2022. Happy New Year, Riggs. Good to be with you. Yeah, and I, I think you should have been with me when I was up in Steamboat Springs over the break. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, I saw the uh, saw the videos, Riggs, and I'm um, desperately, desperately jealous. Uh, I should be there. Uh, years are passing by. I need to get back on the slopes. Good. Well, let's make it happen. Um, Warren Miller famously said, you know, the, the guy who kept touring with all those ski videos, ski films, mm -hmm. he famously said, each year you don't ski is a year you didn't ski. That's exactly right. Right. That is exactly right, my friend. So with that in mind, uh, let's, let's aim for that. But uh, the, the purpose of us talking today uh, on the 20th of January is really to explore uh, how we're going to be delivering water on demand. Now, we, we're, money's coming in. Investors are very excited. Uh, we're soon going to hit the million dollar mark in the fund that is, needs to be spent on assets. But the question is, how do we do it? Now, the first thing we understand is um, that progressive water treatment and modular water systems as fabrication organizations are already pretty maxed out and we can add personnel and so forth but the danger is we won't be able to ex to expand fast enough for the amount of money being raised because money is raised faster than you can add staff and build organizations so the natural answer is well why not delegate it to water companies in the local area like and it makes you very popular because all of a sudden like manna from on high boom here comes a bluebird and it's a contract um, without all the negotiation, we've, we've, we've selected you and so forth. So um, that is the first layer, which seems obvious, but it also makes us scale up. It means that we don't have to rely on our production capability in uh, McKinney or in, in, your, in your neck of the woods in Virginia. So that's my first thought. Um, and then you emailed me... Uh, before the break, actually, about your idea about consulting engineers. Tell me a little bit about that. I'll be glad to, Riggs. Um, in the course of my day-to-day -day practice, uh, as, as I am out working and promoting the modular water uh, systems division in our product lines, I, I'm routinely engaging with the consulting engineering world. Uh, the consulting engineers, uh, they play a major role as an independent third-party agent working on behalf of an end user or a customer uh, that needs a piece of equipment, a piece of water equipment or wastewater equipment. And invariably, um, conversations talk about technology mm -hmm. and then ultimately they talk about funding. Right. Wonder, okay, how much is, the, how much is the, the piece of equipment gonna cost? And that is hugely important. Uh, how to finance and how to fund a project, a water project is usually that's where the decisions are made and that's where the projects um, live and die. What, I, what I'm really seeing, and, I'm, and I have seen this firsthand and have experienced this firsthand over the last several months is that I have been introducing the water on demand program, the concept of what it is to the consulting engineering community. Uh, and I will, and I can share with you, Riggs, that the engineers that I work with, when they learn about water on demand, what they're re recognizing is, is that, hey, not only does modular water and progressive water treatment and origin clear have really nifty packaged wastewater and water solutions, now they have this funding mechanism, this finance mechanism that it basically helps streamline things. Um, you may have a developer or a contractor who may not uh, be flush with cash, or they may be looking at their performance on how the cash flow of the project's gonna work, especially if it is a development that needs a, a water or wastewater utility. And so what happens is when we introduce the water on demand concept to them, they're like, okay, now I've got another alternative funding source that's not conventional lending, not conventional loans, it's not a government backed bond. It's not as onerous relative to the red tape, and that the interest uh, the interest level that I've seen over the last say sixty to ninety days has been very very positive. Uh, I do I can report that I do have uh, uh, several customers, both consulting engineers and specifically developer slash end users that I've spoken with in the last two weeks that I've introduced the water on demand concept to, and they want to learn more about that mm -hmm. because it helps. About they can it finds that uh, it's a different form of funding, 
and it gives them the ability to use conventional loans and, and funding where they need to use it. And then they can use this alternative funding specifically for their water infrastructure and their water asset program. So it's, um, it's a, I really am excited about this. It, the message that I want to communicate is that consulting engineers are supremely important to this. They are specifiers, they're third-party independent agents, and this gives them the ability to bring this to bear and it helps us, it helps them. It's a win-win situation. Okay, so in addition, we're looking at uh, potentially embedding their fee into the package so that they are sure to being paid. I think that's a good thing, right? Yeah, it is. It, it, you can do that. That is that is one of the upsides for the consulting engineer is that by bringing this to bear, we can work with them and above board. Everybody mm -hmm. understands who's doing what and what their fees are. And it, in the private sector, it works extremely well, very streamlined. Um, so it does work that way. Good. And then the other great thing, in my opinion, is Consulting engineer represents the client, but they also represent the greater good. Like, um, so they they are not really um, in opposition. They're really almost an ombudsman in the middle to make sure that things are done correctly. And in a way, they uh, or, or even think of it as a guardian angel, right? They're there to really make sure that the thing comes off right. Um, and this, I think, helps us not be stranded out there with no help and what's going on. Um, even with, even if we bring in a, a contracted water company to do it, we know that there's a consulting engineer who is part of the financial package. And as you say, it's fully above board. It's not a bribe or anything like that. It's, it's, right. it's a bundled fee. Um, and so in that way, there, there's someone who's kind of looking after the whole thing. Um, now, what we're talking about, just before the call, we were talking about potentially saying, look, we will always have a consulting engineer with water on demand. And if someone perchance does not have one, we will assign one to the project. And, and of course, for the consulting engineer, again, it's manna from heaven, like, oh, nice, that was, that was nice. I didn't, I didn't plan on that. Um, but uh, it also means, you know, in my experience, when you make a channel commitment, you say that we will always work with a particular um, uh, role in every contract, it, it kind of uh, brings about reverse loyalty, like we're loyal to them, they're loyal to us. It kind of creates this long-term relationship and a, and a brand that has a trust brand. What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I, it's, it's fantastic. It, it's, it's a quid pro quo, it works both ways. It, it, it builds a mutually beneficial network and a mutually beneficial relationship. Um, I, will, I will also share with you to give you a sense of how, uh, how important I think water on demand is as it compares to conventional loans and lending and financing. Um, water on demand will work very, very well in the private sector. I personally think it will work very well, as crazy as this may sound, in the municipal sector. And there's a reason for that. Mm. In the muni sector, mm -hmm. it is very common for a consulting engineer or a consulting engineering firm to go out, they've got it, there's a, a customer that has a project and they need to fund the project. It's a water project, a wastewater project. Their conventional loans are community, community development block grants, their USDA funded loans, a myriad of other uh, federally funded uh, sources of, of money that, uh, that used to support these infrastructure solutions. The, the Build Back Better would be a good example of that. Problem with that is that is a fixed amount of money. It's a lot mm -hmm. of money, but it's a fixed amount of money, and it doesn't come anywhere remotely close to covering what is needed. Now, in the, muni in the municipal world, well, I think this would work as well, is we can cut through red tape. Mm. That's where this thing and it speeds things up, and so it is an alternative pro, an alternative funding mechanism uh, where brought private sector funding gets introduced to a municipal public sector project. It, it, that I think there's tremendous upside for that. Well, you were telling us in in the management meeting on Monday that in fact there is a a municipal area that has over a thousand pump stations that are because of the way they were built, they're coming to end of life, and we have an opportunity to blanket to get a thousand pump stations, which is a thousand times, what is it about a two hundred thousand dollar product, something like that, right? Um, I, it could be about a hundred thousand. The ones that I looked at were, I, I think it's about a hundred million dollar addressable market, is what I think it is in that one region. Hundred million dollars addressable market just for that one, well, one type product. of infrastructure product, by the way, just one. And we love pump stations because it's a tube with a pump. Thank you very yep. much. <laughs> it is. It is simple, simple as it gets. Thing. Yep, as simple as it gets. In fact, you should be paying them for the privilege of doing something so simple. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but seriously, it is a way you could say, okay, look, 
uh, municipality of you know, Toledo, Ohio. We, we're we're going to um, help you with this. And by the way, we packaged it all up. It's one big, big thing, and you'll just pay on a periodic or whatever basis it is, and uh, and sign on the dotted line. And they can always later when they get uh, grant funding, or whatever, they can roll it in and buy out the contract. That's another thing they can do, right? So it's kind of a, a way to accelerate it. Is what I'm getting from you. Uh, yeah. Eventually, they would want to get out of the rent to center model, right? Um, but but they could do it when they had the funds. And meanwhile, they've solved the problem. And so that's you know you have already you have an, a, you know, a huge advantage in market because so many of your projects are designed to build. In other words, you your specific technology and, and package and license and um, Patents are are embedded and a requirement of the contract. So how how is somebody going to circumvent you? Another here, it's, this adds another incredible benefit, which is by the way, you got the you got the financing, and, and no, it's not an SBA loan, and it's not a, a lease, it's not all these uh, crazy things that require all kinds of backups. So no, here it is, and by the way, you know until you um, buy us out, it is the product is ours, it belongs to us, and we have title to it. That is really, really, and you know, I wasn't even thinking about municipalities because I tend to say, well, you know, the, the trend is towards, you know, self-reliance by businesses. But the truth is that the municipalities still have a shortfall. As you say, they, there's not enough money going around and they got to get, but they got to do something. The, the leakage, for example, um, non-revenue water, the water loss to leakage because of uh, faulty pump stations starts to add up. Now they're losing major revenue, right? So there's all kinds of interesting features to that. Uh, the water on demand, I, I really do believe that water on demand uh, in the small public sector utility world, the, the little small towns and the, the little hamlets that are off the beaten path, they they would benefit greatly from the water on demand model. I mean, you've got the private sector, which we obviously know that that's going to work and that's gonna, that's where the future is and mm -hmm. decentralization and getting away from uh, the bureaucracy of the public sector world. But in this in, in these instances where you have these established these established municipal utilities, um, they're beholden. They have to they have to provide service, and they cannot stop providing service. And finance and funding and those type of those obligations that come with that are hugely important. Water on demand is another solution. Is another viable opportunity for them. And if it can cut out all the red tape, if they've got an immediate need, and they've got to solve a problem, a regulatory issue, or notice of consent, or a violation, and they've got to remedy that in the next 12 months. The funding process sometimes can take 18 to 24 months. Meanwhile, they are getting hammered with fines and go to jail orders and those types of things. This would speed that process up. It would be an interim solution. And then later on, as the more conventional funding might come into place, they can buy it out. <clears throat> very, very, very effective model, in my opinion. Wow, that's really fascinating. And, and I think that <laughs> We're going to add that to it. Now, it's probably slightly different. It's probably not a consumption model. I think they probably would want a flat bill, I'm guessing. But but well, for the wastewater treatment plants, perhaps not. So good. That is, so no. So what we've covered so far is, of course, um, the idea of, of contracting out um, to water companies all over America to do the actual work and the on-site support. So we're not stuck with replacing a membrane or something like that. Number two right. is, is um, making us available to the consulting engineer uh, to to really uh, be an enabler and to embed their fee. Number three is to make it a policy to work through consulting engineers. And then number four is this idea of, of enlarging the addressable market to include the small municipalities to which we already sell systems. I see small towns always, you know, city of so-and-so show up on your forecast on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, of course, Progressive Water does the same. Now, there's a final piece which Tom brought up to me the other day. And I think that's really interesting, which is you've got a, a, an engineer out there, a, a water engineer who's trying to provide a solution to their customer. Um, let's say it's a, they need a, a large booster pump or something like that. And, um, and they're going to get a contract, but the contract, of course, is paid over time, this, that, and the other thing. So we, we can provide a the machinery a, um, to be put in service, right? So they, it is not the end user who's who's paying us it is the the uh the service point who's paying us which is really mm -hmm. interesting because there's several reasons that's good number one already the performance and quality is taken care of that engineer he or she is taking care of performance that's their job we're basically just again just like what you're talking about with the municipality we're simply providing um a jump a time jump and enabling that and it might be short term or long term so that is again another channel player 
uh, that that we would work with to provide them their the, the tools for the job, right? Um, really, and of course, again, they could buy it out because um, over time they might want to. Um, so that you know, the, these the, these five pieces are are really really interesting, and they, and they give us so many ways to play. You know, we like to say that we're Tesla 2004, right? When when Elon Musk came in and, and invested $30 million and, and then they built a really piece of crap Lotus with a bunch of computer batteries. Um, but they started, they did something, right? And then right. now over time, Tesla has become many things. It's got the, 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 the corporate fleets and it's got the, the, you know, the idea of the robo taxi that your, your car works for you all the time. They got the, uh, the power wall. They're sort of like, they got a bunch of plays. And this is where I think water demand is going to go. It's going to have a bunch of plays where um, we can basically be a finance organization, an opportunistic finance organization that does not require you to, uh, for example, um, you know, have an, a lien in place. Of course, we have lien uh, um, powers because it's our property, but we're not leasing. It's not a finance program. It's not a loan. It's simply a, a service. Mm -hmm. And that to me, is really, really interesting. So in this short conversation, we've, we've explored, you know, five different um, spokes to the water on demand concept. It's, you know, I'm, you know, I, I, I realize that, that this is our own baby and everybody loves our own baby, but this, this is fascinating, I think. It, it really is, Riggs. Uh, and using the spoke, using the spoke analogy is correct. Uh, if you look at water, if you look at the water world as a wheel and all the spokes that are in part of the wheel to make the wheel turn, Finance, technology, service, engineering, all of those things, ownership and operation, all of those things uh, represent a spoke in the wheel that is the water wheel. And you have to have all of those things. Uh, right now, the problem with the industry, and it's plagued the industry and it's just terrible, is that you got a spoke on this wheel and you got a spoke on this wheel and a spoke on this wheel, but none of them are, you don't have enough spokes to make the wheel turn. <laughs> and that's really what that, that really is what has plagued this industry. When, the this this really centralized concept is in this this business model and enterprise model that we're pursuing um both internally using our own capabilities our own internal technologies bringing to bear, bringing to bear the water on demand but then working with channel partners like consulting engineers and other vendor other equipment vendors that are not under our fold everybody this this will help everybody ex to accelerate uh solutions, water solutions in the world, decentralized solutions where they where they're really, really important and really desperately needed. So this is a really a, a really a big thing here. This is huge. Well, it makes me think of Amazon because Amazon uh, is more than just a buying a selling platform. They perform many, many services to to various audiences and and uh, you know they've created this um, they've accelerated the pace of e-commerce tremendously. Which has made them, of course, a dominant platform, uh, but it's also very beneficial. You know, I tend to buy from Amazon by default because I, you know, mm -hmm. I've got, you know, as a business, for example, I've got one place with all my darn receipts. You know, things like that. So right. it's really interesting to um, to be a consolidator of a financial resource. And then what we like final piece is this idea that you've got this proprietary technology, five patents, and you know, a tremendous. Were, um, reputation credit you know credentials and you do the webinars with the engineers and and you know people um specify your technology so there's you know the, the design is uh, specified in the contract so then we go okay let's provide that technology to xyz water company for them to use in the contract because it's technology we know that you can manage uh, and you can make sure there's best practices. Now we start getting license royalties and we will expand the use of the modular water systems uh, product line vastly beyond our own capabilities right now. I mean, right now you're a one arm paper hanger, right? You're like going as fast as you can and it's going crazy, but there's a limit. Even if you had 10 people assisting you, there'd still be a limit, right? Whereas if we start doing licensing and it's all technology transfer, now we're talking about this amazing technology getting out there. So uh, I think that is sort of a final uh, cherry on top. So it's so it's so exciting and fun. And uh, what I like about it is we can accomplish real change, right? I mean, yeah. I see it as a way to unblock so much of what goes on in water. 
Yeah, uh, the, the change mechanism there, being a change agent, a change agent in this business, that's hugely important. It really is. Fantastic. Dan, listen, it's been really fascinating talking about this. Um, and, uh, you know, this is something that as we build the water on demand team, we're going to have all these features in it. And, uh, you know, there's going to be a book about this. There's going to be a book. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I do agree, Riggs. I will tell you, I will share with you before we drop off that uh, 2022, we are three weeks into it. And this, the, the forecast for modular water systems program, our, the division there is just phenomenal. Just, I, I've been, the first three, the first three weeks of this year have been surprisingly just, I'm just shocked at the, the inflow of business and new mm -hmm. opportunities, new prospects. Uh, and it's just the 2022 looks to be a stellar year. I mean, 2021 was good, was really, really good. But I think 2022 and looking beyond that in 2023, the way the program is evolving, the way the, the our team has come together, I am just very, very excited for what the future holds. Well, really what the market re rewards, of course, is stick to itiveness, right? We've been doing this since June 2018. The last week of June 2018, I think the 2030 was. And... Well, We've been doing it steadily and building, and you've been doing all that um, influencer marketing, working with the manufacturing sales reps, establishing a reputation for high credibility with these these organizations, so that they go, okay, you know, we can give this to Modular Water, they'll do it, they'll handle it just fine, and just building that rep over time, getting on the radar, delivering, 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 and then of course the um, the fact that you are proprietary, so that. These darn, you know, opportunistic companies can't just rip it away, which we've seen it again and again when, when we don't have that kind of design differentiation. So it's really interesting. Um, and I'm my I, I'm a gog. I'm watching the, the numbers. I'm like, darn, this is this is crazy, right? So let's make sure that we attend to your survival by you know adding people to your team. I know that Tom is working a whole evolution to properly staff the line of business. Uh, directly at corporate. And uh, I think that's incredibly important. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, you, you're going to be contributing revenues and profits. That is fantastic. Then with this one on demand, you're going to be able to consult to it and, and, and provide your technology and licensing, et cetera. I think that um, we're going to have some fun. Um, and also I think the, that we're establishing, you know, new standards, new ways of doing things. And uh which is why we're in business, right? We're not there to just punch the clock, right? That's exactly right. That would be boring. I don't. I don't <laughs> Some I don't people live they live by that mantra, like, "Hey, I paid, you know, I'm good, right?" And I'll go to the Poconos to have to go on vacation. But other than that, I'm just punching in, punching out. But fortunately, not me. Not me. That's not who I am. <laughs> All right, my friend. Well, listen, Dan, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Um, and I'll play this tonight in a, in a couple hours. Uh, but you have a good evening and keep up the fantastic work. We're extremely happy with what you're doing for us. Thank you. Thank you, Riggs. Let's get back. Let's get back at it. Stay cool, calm, and collected. That's right. Ciao.